Hello and welcome to another episode of the Kennel NRL podcast. The Bulldogs had the bye. State of Origin is tomorrow night and we're all in for a big week of footy. I'd like to welcome my co-host Dibbo. How are you Dibbo? Good mate. Never get sold. We always look forward to the podcast for another episode. Uh, more comments, more dramas. Oh, gotta love it. Gotta love it. Loving all your comments uh, in, in the chat. Uh, also, before we go on, just want to quickly mention, please be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're enjoying our content or if you're not enjoying it, make sure to subscribe and leave a hateful comment so that we can see it. <laughs> Don't listen to it. You know, honestly, I, I still like... But make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. It really, really helps us just continue to grow the channel, continue to provide um, uh, content and continue to bring guests on. And we have some big things happening next week onwards in terms of guests. We don't want to spoil the surprise, but you guys will be very, very delighted to see what we have in store for you guys next week. But yeah, just leave any comments. If there's anything you want to hear, anything you want to know, um, if you have questions about Dibba or myself or anything at all, just leave a comment below. Click that like button, click subscribe, share with your friends, share with everybody that loves footy and let them uh, and tell us what you think of the podcast and now to the footy that's what we're here for yeah um i think a few weeks ago there was um a very pivotal moment on the podcast where two members of the podcast actually <laughs> laid a wager out uh, one was saying he's he was willing to give up his whole podcast um that his beloved bulldogs wouldn't capitulate to the other hosts, um, Roosters, um, that's all being laid out on the line on Sunday. Although one of my co-hosts is saying that he retracted his hands from a handshake and regardless of the result, it's null and void. Look, if you guys remember, uh, Omar Slamankil and I uh, had a bit of a wager that if the Roosters were to beat the Bulldogs, uh, he would get the podcast. Now, let me be very, very clear. I do think the Bulldogs are going to win, win well. Roosters by 16. Bulldogs are going to win and win well. Do, you know, Dibbo is a Dragons supporting hater whose team is currently last and in store for the wooden spoon. So we can ignore all the rubbish that he says. But this podcast is our baby. And uh, where is Omar? He wasn't here last week. He's not here now. Sorry, he doesn't I, get a say. I think this podcast is getting rebranded on Monday to the Chook Pen. Is that what <laughs> the Chook Pen. Or is it the Roost? Oh, uh, I'm just kidding. But anyway. I think it'll have ten people listening. Oh, I've um, I've looked at both lineups. Um, I mean, Canterbury had that good comeback win against Gold Coast before they went away. And Roosters crashed and burned yet again. Um, I'm pretty sure Canterbury. I'm confident Canterbury, barring injury, will have both their players backing up. I mean, it's more likely Addo so, will play. So ju just to give an idea yeah. um, for everybody uh, listening, um, so. The team that's been named uh, actually doesn't include Josh Adokar and Tavita Pengai Jr. What Cameron Seraldo has done is named them on, on an extended bench. So uh, basically the team lines up as such. It'll be Perim, Kiraz, Averillo, Alamadi, and then Blake Wilson in the number five uh, in place of Josh Adokar. Then you've got Carl Oloapu at six, Matty Burden at seven, Max King, Reed Money, and then Ryan Sutton starting at forward in the number 10 in place of Tavita Pengai Jr. And then interestingly, Jaden Okumbo, the Ock, the Ock himself will be starting at number 11, which I think is well earned. Number 12, Jacob Preston. And number 13 will be Corey Waddell. Not Harrison Edwards, who, who's been very, very good. Uh, uh, Corey Waddell. Then at 14, you've got Reynolds, Moran, Samuel, Samuel Hughes, who's got a, who's uh, aggravated his peck, and Harrison Edwards at 17. Hang on a sec. You said Samuel Hughes aggravated his peck? Yep. So what's to go there? Um, so one to three weeks is a minor aggravation. So he's not playing anymore? Well, he can play. Alrighty Just depends up. on pain tolerance. Gotcha. Right? Interestingly... Khaled Rajab is at 19. Yep. All right. Now, Josh Reynolds at 14. I'll swap them, man. Swap I would them. swap them. Having Khaled Rajab at 14, I think, um, to interchange, I think could do very, very well for the team. Even, to be honest, even Kyle Flanagan in place of Reynolds, I think is a better move on the bench. I think that could, I could, I think that could be a little bit of a better move than having um, Josh Reynolds there. Look, no, no hate to Josh Reynolds at all. I just think that if we're looking to, towards the future, um, I mean, okay, maybe not Carl Reynolds, Carl Flanagan, because I, I don't know if he's going to be there in twenty twenty three, but definitely Khaled Rajab. 
or another forward, someone like like a like a Jackson Tarpane, Topine, or um, you know uh, whoever um, can come in there. Even Gerald Skelton have him on the bench. He's a he's a big body. Um, so that's the team. Uh, the Roosters have named their state of origin players to back up. Who's in the halves? So they've got Joseph Manu and Luke Curie. Joseph Manu's back from injury and Luke Curie at seven. I think it's a failure. That's um, That experiment is well and truly not working. Um, and um, Tedesco's named. Um, Jared Rory Hargreaves is named at eight. He's back. Lindsay Collins backs up from origin at 10. Um, then you've got the Butcher Brothers at 11 and 12 and Sitili Tupanua at 13. You've got H- Drew Hutchison, Nathan Brown, Angus Crichton and Matthew Lodge I just wanna, make up the bench. So I just want to point out an interesting stat. 16 out of the 17 NRL sides this year have scored more than 30 points. The only side that hasn't scored more than 30 points this year is incidentally the Sydney Roosters. They haven't scored more than 30 points Every once. Every other NRL side has. And that's just a stunning stat. The Roosters, the all-conquering Roosters of the last decade, 14 rounds in, have not scored 30 points plus. Do they break, break their duck this year against Canterbury? No. Do they? Do they not? We'd, I mean, they've been very ordinary the last few weeks. They've been ordinary for the last six weeks, I'd say. Well, you know, They got towelled up against Penrith. Um, they lost against St. George, on, the low St. George against on the buzzer. Um, I think it's um, all happening for them. It's nothing's going right at the moment. I think the Bulldogs uh, look. To be honest, the way the team's named, I don't think uh, the team will line up the way it's been named. I think that Samuel Hughes would drop off. I do think that Tavita they'll rest, they'll rest him. Yeah, I, I think that Tavita Pangai Junior will be in. He's, um, he's not going to play a whole game. He's pl- probably going to play gonna half a game. Forty minutes, fifty minutes, maybe fifty, and then he can back up for Canterbury. I think Adokar Car provided that he come, he doesn't come back sore. Yeah. Will also be there, but. Blake Wilson did well in his first game and in his second game. So it's I a think big body too. Yeah, he's, he's a very, very quick, smart player. I'm, I'm not upset with that. Obviously, obviously, much rather prefer the Fox to be there, um, but him not being there isn't. Um, it's not too bad, especially if he has a blinder for the Blues. Um, you know, you got to got to do what you do for your state. Um, I I am a little bit worried about our forwards. I think we we look a little bit thin in the forwards. Ryan Sutton's not bad by any stretch, but. Uh, not having Tavita Pangai Jr. there could be detrimental. I, I hope he plays. I think he's going to play. I mean, I hope he comes through injury. Uh, no no injuries. Yeah. I just think the Roosters, they're going to have to up their game. Joe Warrior Hargraves is playing. Angus Crichton's playing. Uh, Matt Lodge is there. Still a bit missed. I'm still actually very mystified why he didn't come on in the second half against St. George. He was the best forward on the park in that first half. So, I mean, I, I don't know why Matt Lodge isn't starting. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. I can't answer I don't, that. I don't, honestly, I don't. I don't understand what's going on there. Um, clearly, Joseph Manu is is Look, better yeah, in the centres. Um, yeah, but he can he can do it himself. Look, I, I'm gonna say he hasn't now, though. Canterbury's been in better form. Um, I mean, Roos is not. Long, no, I don't think they have. Uh, how long Roos is gonna keep playing poorly? Uh, you know, but it could be one of those seasons for the Roosters, and it, it, it's looking it's like looking it is like that, but. And look, the thing is, the Bulldogs are on the cusp of the... If they can win this game, they'll be very, very close to the top eight. Oh, of course. Yeah. Right? And all we've needed is just that one bye to help our team recover. And if you you know, if you know, look at some of the niggling injuries we had before, and now that we've had two weeks to recover, Max King, Jake Piquiraz, uh, you know, Jake, uh, Jake Averillo, a few of the other players, I think, will, will have now had time to recover. So you've got, um, you know... Uh, Ryan Sutton had has had some time. Also, he was he was going battling some injuries. So you know, even if Tavita Pengai Jr. does come out come in, um, you know, I do think that it's we've got we're looking better. We're looking in better shape now than we were um, against the Titans. Who's the Roosters starting forward pack? Can you read that out to me? Yeah, so it's uh, Jared Warrior Hargreaves at eight, Jake yep. Turpin at nine. Yep. Then you've got uh, Lindsay Collins at ten. You've got. Egan and Nat Butcher, 11 and 12, and then Satili Tupanua at 13. So yeah, it's not a bad uh, starting... Who's your bench again? Drew, Drew Hutchison, yep. Nathan Brown, Angus Crichton, and Matthew Lodge. Yeah, Crichton and Lodge will come on. And then, yeah, the Butchers are starting. I, I don't expect much impact from Nathan Brown. Um, I question why Drew Hutchison is even there. So so do a lot of Roosters fans. Um, yeah, but, but that's good for us. Yeah. And, um, you, you know, they dropped... Um, 
They dropped Jackson Paulo, which I think is... So he actually got dropped, not injured. Wow. He's number 20. Number 20. Yeah. Gee whiz. Which, which for me is like... Can I ask? He's be, he's taking the flack. He's like the... the, the um, they got Dominic... Um, they got Dominic uh, Hansen. What's his name? Dom next Young. year. Coming next year. Yeah. And then somehow re-signed Tupu. Tupo. Um, it's funny. They they outbid everyone for Spencer Lenu and outbid everyone for Dom Young to replace... Tupo and Warrior Hargreaves. And, and they reside both, them. yeah. So who misses out now in their top squad? So Jackson Paulo seems to be on the outer, even though I think it's... Uh, the it, sombrero got bigger. That's yeah, what I was some, to say. the sombrero continues to grow. But look, I, you know, I don't think it's fair that Jackson Paulo Bal- uh, was getting dropped. I thought he's been really good this he's year. He's been excellent. I mean... It's unfair that he's the one that's that's being made the the scapegoat I'm for... Trying to get him out, just so... Because they know they're in a bit of a selection dilemma for next year. Well, I mean... What a dirty club. That's that's quite dirty. It's 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 uncalled for, but... And I think they're trying to get... Lo- out of, I mean, the fact Lodge didn't play in that second half against the Dragons. Well, they ha- they've already told him they're not offering him a contract for 2024. It looks like Canary will be signing him. I don't think so. He's a good forward. He's a good forward. I know you, oh, that's this is a big one. You see the media reports? I know we've spoken about it on the podcast since day one, but Payne Haas... I'm sure they're going to throw out in 1.3 million. There's a few Twitter uh, followers of the kennel that are speak, talking it up and they will, will be very happy to hear um, some alleged media reporters saying that uh, the, the, the the Bulldogs are targeting Payne Haas to uh, bring him to play alongside Tevita Pangai Jr. I think some are offering to sell their house to fund the move. Um, if I owned Actually, one, fans. if I owned the house, I would sell it to fund the move. <laughs> 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 um, no, but I think... Um, Look, if there's any truth to it, I think it's great and the Bulldogs would be stupid not to throw a lot of money at Payne Haas to bring him uh, to the Bulldogs. If you look at Luke Thompson, he's getting paid over $800,000 to be at the Dogs and has probably done very little. We, we, is is you he know, off contract? Yeah, he's off contract. He might be out of the way. Um, there's your money. You know, and, you, you, I'm, and, and you know, even at, um, Phil Gould was saying that we have money in the cap to sign a marquee player. And we have some is. cap left left over. Do I? Do we need a, f- a, f- a forward though? Is it the front row where we should be targeting? Just get Payne Haas, please. Yeah, I know. I, it would be amazing. But I mean, the Dragons should have some money to be able to go after Payne Haas, don't well, they? they got Riles now. I think it's sort of practically done done and dusted. Um, I mean, does anyone want to play for St. George? I mean, they might want to play for St. George, but do they want to base themselves in Wollongong? I mean, there's, they've lost a few players or the players have gotten disgruntled. Yeah. St. George is not a club that can... Yeah, your club's put, hopeless. Yeah, exactly. So they're not a club that can attract players. They don't have the personnel at the club. I mean, the only time they seem to be able to attract players in the last four decades is when Wayne Bennett was at the club. Oh, shouldn't they Shouldn't they pay overs for someone like Payne Haas to come to them? Hands down, anyone should. But Wayne Bennett was there. He managed to attract players without even having to pay overs. He, he gave them their market worth. He didn't have to pay overs. People want to play for Wayne Bennett. Riles, I think Riles has sort of coached players, probably want to play for him. He's a big, imposing figure. Seems like a cool head as opposed to his playing days. Um, Do you think there's any uh, truth to the rumours to suggest that uh, Payne Haas wants to play rugby as opposed to stay in rugby league? Mate, if the money's there, I mean, why would you knock it back? But how much are they going to offer him more than what the league's going to give him? A hundred k, two hundred k. Well, I mean, it depends. I think turn it down. It depends. What if what if he beats rugby league by half a mil? Yeah, oh, you'd be silly to turn it down. Do you know half what I mean? Million's a lot yeah, of money. half a million's a lot of money, and then potentially could play Japan in the off season or of make even more money. And he would be a marketable athlete. He 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 could be anything in union. Agreed. Agreed. He could play your number A. He could play in the. He could play you prop. So he can play your loose head and tight head prop. Just telling how it works. He won't play in those. He could play his second row or lock, but yeah. he's not going to really much use on the lineouts. He can play in the flankers, or he could even play you as a outside center, just bullock onto the ball. He'll be a big, big win for the Wallabies. Huge, marquee, massive, sorry, marketable. Yeah. He'll be yeah, very marketable. I mean, I hope he doesn't go. But look, can I say he does need a he does need a um, sea change or a location change. He's had a. I think he's doing well at Brisbane. It's not that. I think. He's just had a bit of a traumatizing last year on a personal level. Um, yeah, it's been tough for him. Family-wise, not just his mum, but, I mean, his brother got himself into some trouble as well. And before that, he came out yeah. unscathed at the end. But, yeah, I mean, does Payne want to be around 
those distractions. And how old is he? He's only 22, 23? Yes, I think he's 23, yeah. He's still so young. He's incredible, incredible for a young man. And the Canterbury, look, the Canterbury fans are, are, are calling out. To, they want. They are literally calling out for him. They are calling. They want to embrace him. They want to show him the love. Yeah, Phil Gould's not, uh, Phil Gould's not stupid. I'm sure Phil Gould is uh, he's putting his feelers out and uh, he's speaking to his manager, Ahmed. The, uh, the, uh, we're going to call Phil the dog father. So not the yeah. godfather, <laughs> the, the, godfather. Dog, the dog father. So, yeah, the dog father, I'll tell you what, he's making moves, whether he gets pain in the ass or not. But there's also Saifides that will be off contract. I think the Saifides will be a good get a as well. Sign. There's Matt Lodge. I mean, there's four forwards there. If your club has money to remove... In the cap, I'm not referring just to Canterbury, I'm referring to other clubs. Uh, I'm not referring to St. George because it's just a hopeless case if they don't give Rolls his free reigns. But if you don't sign one of those four players, and then forget it. Well, look, Luke Thompson, we either, we either re-sign him uh, on the cheap or we get rid of him and use his money to potentially sign two forwards, not just one. I would use his money. I mean, he's haven't got a return out of him for, for the last – how long has he been there for? Four years? Uh, during COVID? I think four years, yeah. You haven't got a or return. three years. I think Look, three years. Yes, I haven't got a return out of him. There's nothing to suggest that you will get a return out of him. I mean, just when you thought you might get a return out of him, he all of a sudden he's out for four months yeah. for a list frank injury. List frank injury. So nothing's going to change. And, I, know, and, I know Phil is all over it. Unless he plays for his for minimum pay or, or unders, um, there's no point in signing him. I'd rather free that money and either sign two out of those. If you're not going to get pain Haas, you can try to get two out of those four forwards yeah. that we spoke about. Absolutely. That's a smarter move. Um, and mate, we can bolster up the pack just to make, create that's depth. That's your starting pack. That pack, no one's going to match it, or it's, they're going to be up there. In yeah, the top one of the four. one of the biggest, absolutely. Yeah. No, no. Look, I, I, I agree. I mean, Payne Haas would be on another level if we can get someone like Payne Haas. That would be incredible. But um, I don't know if we would re-sign Luke Thompson on anywhere near the same money that he is getting paid to oh, come. Oh, definitely not. No, because his his injury is still indefinite, so he may not even play again this year. Or at all. It's, I mean, yeah, the only option I see him for him here, if he is to resign, it's going to be on significantly less money. Um, I can see another NRL side picking him up, or he's just heading back home to England. I'm sure he's enjoyed his time in Australia, but yeah, I can't see Canterbury offering him. No, no, we Unless it's near. a lot reduced than what he's on. It would have to be possibly at 50 to 60% of what he's getting. Yeah, maybe 40%. Well, yeah, you're not off there. I mean, I can't speculate, but yeah. they're not going to offer him nowhere near. Um, I'll tell you who's been impressive for the Bulldogs and who I, who I thought was very... Jaden Ockenball. Jaden, the Ock's been amazing. But I know who he's going to go to, his love child, Harrison Edwards. Am no, right? actually, I was going to say Curtis Morin. Yeah, he was very good off, your, off uh, for you guys. Tiny, but mighty. Like, this guy has the heart of a bulldog. He runs hard. He, he you so know, he's a bulldog. He's, oh, he, is he, he, what? He's got, he's got speed. He's got, he's got energy. Mongrel. He's got mongrel. Um, just like his, uh, if you remember his uncle... Yeah, Brad Morin. <laughs> Brad Morin. Because <laughs> he doesn't have his hairdo. Bold. Uh, not bold, but he's... he's yeah, his uncle had a lot of mongrel in him. Yeah, he did. Absolutely. And um, and you're right. Harrison Edwards, I think, has been playing very well. He's very slick with the ball. Can pass both sides of the ruck. I think he should be starting and staying at lock. I, I think um, back on Morin, he should aim to be a Jim Dimmick type of player. Not your biggest forward. He was in the lock, but, geez, nobody would want to take that guy head on. He was just your rock. At lock, Jim Dimmick. Uh, I know he moved on to um, Parramatta in later years, but he won a premiership with Canterbury in '95. I reckon Moran will cut it out at lock, and if he just be as uh, just as intimidating as Jim Dimmick, he'll go a long way in his career. Look, I think I think I think Harrison Edwards should be able to um, hold down the lock position. You know what? Um, on Harrison Edwards, I know we uh, blow his trumpet a lot in the terms of I'm referring to. Um, I already forgot his name, but your second Jacob one. Preston. Ja yeah, Jacob Preston. But geez, you not only got Jacob Preston that's been a shining light this year. Harrison Edwards has come out of nowhere. I agree. And wow, you got two finds in there that look like going to be a ten-year forwards, both pushing for Origin selections. Um, they're going to be a force in years to come. So, I mean, it just needs it needs Harrison Edwards just need to be needs to be. Uh, cultivated that that potential needs to be cultivated he needs to be given the chance to roam because honestly like Raymond Fatala Marino wasn't even um uh listed in the team wasn't wasn't listed in the team at all not sure what's going on with Raymond Fatala Marino he was sick for the last game um, still not well it's probably, possibly still not well but um could be a weather 
could be. I know um, a lot of people, I mean, I'm sure uh, back out my work, we've had a lot of spate of illnesses this last week and a half. It's it's definitely been the weather, um, but, you know, uh, and ha- he's ruled out again due to illness. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's pretty interesting. But I do believe, again, um, that Harrison Edwards should be starting in place of Corey Udell at the lock position and let him play the 80 because he, he's been able to handle it recently. Um, you know, I do think Sam Hughes has been okay, hasn't been great, but hasn't been bad, and he's still quite still young. Raw. Yeah, still, still raw. Still raw. We do, I think we have the, the ability to to put on a very good game and beat the Roosters. I really think that we can beat the Roosters. Um, with, especially with the bye, I think you'll start to see Max King um, and Jacob Kuras really – start to hit their straps again. Aloapu's had some more time to train alongside Burden now, starting at six. I think that's going to do wonders for him He's as well. He's improving every week, so. Absolutely. Um, so I'm going to call it. I'm going to say dogs by 14. Wow, big scoreline. I think it's going to be a close game. Um, yeah, close game. Oh, Roosters got to end the right somehow. That's the only thing that's got going for them. I'm going to go Roosters by eight, even though it's probably wrong, but. Look, the thing is, what are they doing differently to to end the rot? They're going to come out all guns blazing. Joey Manu's is back. I think Joey's going to put two or three tries by himself. He's done that in the past. The jo- Jared Warrior Hargreaves is back as well. Yeah, look, I don't think the Roosters are going to rely on as much as Jared Warrior Hargreaves. Um, he's been quite down the last two months, I've found. Yeah. Um, I think players like Tupanoa and um, Angus Crichton are going to step it up a notch. I think we'll find out what happens with Lodge. I think that's, yeah. I think Swale will probably have a good game this week. He's been below average the last six weeks from what we know from him. The thing is, Swale can do damage. Um, Mine's gone elsewhere since. But, yeah. you know, he's up against Jack Avrilla, who I think has been really, really good. Oh, Jack Avrilla deserves all the accolades and coming I, his way. He deserves all I'm the hoping respect. Jack Avrilla can just burn oh, Swale like the on the side, on the outside. That'd yeah, be there's, amazing. There's no reason why he can't. Yeah, he can. Uh, and and I'm I'm actually thinking that Jacob Kiraz will have his best game of the season. Yeah, I think um, especially with confidence that he's got, and after last week's game, um, is our it, back line is, is is primed. Is he on Billy Smith's side? Yeah, no, that's Paul Alamotti. He's on Corey Allen's side. Oh, okay. Corey Allen's a good defender. Yeah, yeah Corey Allen's still, a good player. He'll still do well. Billy Smith's got a lot of errors in his game. Um, another one I'm questioning is selection in a Roosters lineup. I'm not. No, I think Billy Smith's been really good for them. He was dreadful for against the Panthers. He was dreadful against the Dragons. No, nah, he's he's. You can't single up a single player. The whole team was dreadful against them. Yeah, I think he's just got too many errors in his game and poor decision making. So Dogs he's more by of 14. a rugby union player anyway. Billy Smith. He came from a rugby union background, and that's where he should go. Dogs by fourteen. Uh, that's a good shout. I mean, like I said, I mean, I don't know. I was just thinking Roosters has got to end the rot somewhere and this might be the week. No. Just looking forward to seeing red, white and blue colours here on Monday. <laughs> I love playing this game. Uh, any any games stand out for you over the weekend coming up? I don't know. I mean, I think Paris still going to – I think Paris reserve grade side is still going to roll the Dragons. I'm, I'm assuming they're going to rest their 10 players from origin. <laughs> I was going to say, is there a... Uh, they're still going to roll the Dragons. Um, they've, named, they've, they've named all their um, origin players. They'll, they'll, they'll rest a few of them. And, and, I mean, it's only the Dragons, so they can afford to rest them oh, anyway. Like I said, they're going to run out the reserve. Yeah, the grade. Dragons I mean, are a rubbish team, don't know what they're doing, I'd rubbish give, club. I'd, <laughs> I'd, I'd uh, rest... Oh, you know, I'd probably rest Brian Dole. You reckon? Yeah, he's going to have a high work rate. I think he'll probably rest. Nathan he, he's Cleary. gonna have twenty something hit ups, two hundred something meters in origin, twenty thirty tackles, three line breaks, two tries, um, ten big hits, three concussions, which they won't pick up. So yeah, Tyler will get a rest. Do you think uh, the St George Dragons will rest Ben Hunt or will he play? No, oh, they're desperate to avoid the wooden spoon. Um, it's been eighty five years since they won the spoon. Something we're proud of. <laughs> Jack uh, Jack the Billin at captain again. <laughs> that was disgraceful. I mean, yeah. Why do they have? I know he's found not guilty, but why do you have a bonehead at captain? Oh, they had no one else to choose from. I still would have went Jack Bird ahead of him anyway. Yeah, I, I don't. To be honest, I think he's been one of the main reasons that drove the Dragons down a few years ago, 
And instead of the Dragons clearing him out, they re-signed him. They've kept him. Do you remember? It was 2018. They made the second week of the finals. They lost by one point to Souths, who almost went the whole way. They lost, I think, by two points to the Roosters, who won the grand final. Dragons were having talked up. They had a few recruits for 2019 come into the side. And I think just before the preseason trial, bang. Mm. The Bellin gets hit with a... And it was just all downhill after that. And they've laboured the last three seasons, well, last four seasons. They haven't got no win. I know they finished ninth or tenth in a few of those seasons, but in all honesty, no win. Just no overachieving, yeah. no win. They should have never even been in their contest to make it. Look, and, and to be clear, I'm not saying it's They have all, a weak forward pack. I'm not saying it's all Jack DeBellin's fault, but I do think he contributed. Had, look... It's not always fault. It's a lot of the blame has to lay, uh, not the coaches, the club administration, um, and your PR guy. Every time there's something on, you know, they put him forward to talk. Like, what's going on? Nick, you know what surprises me? They, they love courting controversy. They got rid of Paul Vaughan but kept Jack DeBellin. Explain that, was, that to me. Yeah, I'm mystified. Absolutely mystified. To be, to be honest, I don't understand why the doggies got rid of Paul Vaughan. Look, uh, I think they only signed him on a year deal anyway. But he Look, you can excuse the dogs, but just on that previous example you gave alone, Mr. Five, because the other guys are repeated. You know, after that barbecue, the other guy hid under the bed, refused to give himself up, <laughs> and he's done some others, you know. God, foot, footy players can be stupid. A lot of, uh, look, I'll tell you now, rugby league where it was at now compared to 20 or 30 years ago is going places. A lot of players are actually studying for degrees. Oh, absolutely. Diplomas, yeah. Agreed, agreed. Opening businesses. Um you know, a lot of players from disadvantaged backgrounds, um, such as the Polynesian brothers, um, you know, they're actually studying, they're graduating their courses, they're going somewhere with life. Um, if you look at, I mean, growing up, uh, a lot of my Polynesian friends, a lot of them didn't even, either didn't finish school, I didn't know any of that went to university. You know, they've come a long way. Um, so yeah, the game's actually going places. They've got a good education program, they've got a good awareness program. I'll give the kudos to the NRL for that, organising things in that sense. So, And you know what? It's actually flowing on to the wider community as well. Um, yeah. Role models, bro. Role, Role models. models, yeah. See how they're trying to turn it around? Um, absolutely. So with that, I think we've come to the end of the podcast. We've uh, discussed the Bulldogs, discussed the Dragons. Just once again, give me your comments on all – social media platforms i love it on i always see it on twitter i see it on facebook I see it on tiktok and i see it on instagram oh sorry on youtube um love you i love your input um yeah anything you always want to talk about any opinions any suggestions anything any other you, topics love anything it. here on the podcast you guys want to discuss feel free to reach out um like and subscribe once again uh, as i said it helps our channel it helps us grow and helps us continue to bring new content um there is a very, very good chance that we'll have a current first grade player on the podcast with us next week. We'll confirm um, early next week. Before it airs, we'll actually put out a short or something. Be sure to like and subscribe so that you don't miss out because this is going to be a very exciting one. It's going to be a current and arrow player. Um, and please follow all our socials and I'll make sure that we blast it out and we sort of uh, we get the information out there so that you guys uh, don't miss out on some very, very exciting content that we have coming up. Thank you so much if you stuck this uh, through this podcast with us. Um, tomorrow is State of Origin. I cannot wait. The Bulldogs are going to beat the Roosters handily on Sunday. What a week this is going to be. Up the Blues, up the Dogs. Thank you very much and we'll see you on the next one. Adios.